Hello, I'm Cheryl Meyer, and this, and I'm otherwise known as Cheryl M. Healthviews. And what my goal is, is to inspire you to lead a healthier lives. So when I proposed my podcast, I proposed that we present it in two different segments. The first one is It Feels Good to Feel Good, Future Proof Your Health, where I get to share everything I have learned to return my health back to relative wellness and to live a pain-free life in spite of the fact that I have autoimmune disease. But the second part of my podcast is this episode, and that's Tell Me Your Story The Health Views Is In. My concept was like this is it's all fine and well that you hear me tell my story, but I get a lot of it's all fine and well that it worked for you, but it's not going to work for me. And I wanted you to hear that there are lots of people out there that have made changes in their lifestyle that have supported their health and brought them back to relative wellness. We all have a couple things in common. We all owned our own health. Whatever the doctor was suggesting we did was going on on a parallel path to us making these lifestyle changes where we did things that cleaned up our toxic load. We all pay attention to our body. You'll hear jazz in the background because I want you to listen to the rhythm of your health and I want you to pay attention to what your body is telling you. My body had been trying to tell me that I was going to topple over into toxic load for some time. I just wasn't listening. So if you clean up your lifestyle and if you listen to your body, you have a very good chance not of being deprived in any way, but returning to feeling darn good. And that's what these podcasts are really all about. So thank you for joining me. This is going to be a Tell Me Your Story, The Health Needs Is In episode. And I hope you enjoy it. And I hope that we all inspire you to lead a healthier, happier life. Thank you. Welcome to another episode of Tell Me Your Story, The Health Views is Here. And I have a very exciting guest joining me today. She actually lives in South America, which I'm fascinated with, which I'm going to want her to tell us a little bit about as we get into her story. But she is somebody who suddenly started getting arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease. And her mother started getting Alzheimer's at about the same time. And she quickly connected the dots that she needed to deal with her arthritis right away because otherwise it could progress and she could be in exactly the same place that her mother was in. And I don't know if you guys know this, but when you get autoimmune disease, there's something called multiple system autoimmune disease where you get one. My first one was diabetes. You get one and then they start to just escalate and you start to get others. So the key is to own your health as before you know something's going wrong, but if you're not gonna react until you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, then you've gotta react for sure, because otherwise your disease is gonna progress in ways that you really don't want it to go. So Kate Kunkel, is, is am I pronouncing that right? Kunkel, Kunkel, like Kunkel, Uncle with a K. <laughs> okay, Kate Kunkel is here with us today, and she's gonna tell us all about her story and what she did to slow down the progression of her arthritis and to help her mother along the way for as long as her mother was still with us. And then we'll get into what she's doing in South America because that's a great part of the story too. So I'm gonna introduce Kate. Hi, Kate, welcome. Hi, oh, thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. I love this energy. I feel like we could conquer the world and make everybody better if we could we just can, get them to listen we to can. us. We can, we can. If we could only, I, I call myself a muse because I want to inspire people to change and add healthy habits now because it's never too late. That's I'm older right. than you are, but it's never too late. No, no, no. I'm, the only time it's late is when you're not here anymore. That's right. the only time it's too late. Right. So tell us about what you were doing because that in it to itself is an interesting story and then how you knew that something was going wrong with your body. Yeah, so I lived actually in Studio City, California. Um, I was uh, on a- Right down a, the street. 
<laughs> Just, yeah. So when you said LA, I'm like, oh, um, yeah. So I was there. Um, I was hosting a television show. I was still harping, and I'm I'm a, a harp therapist and a sound uh, therapist, but I also um, was doing a television program. I hosted and produced a television program in Studio City, and that was well, it was the last year. Anyway, it was nine years, and in the last year or so, I started having a lot of trouble. Um, just doing the normal things like opening jars and um, I felt kind of weak. And then when we were, uh, we lived along the Los Angeles river there, <laughs> the river that's a concrete, you know, tube. And I would go walking and um, it got so that my, my feet were not um, like, it was the pain, so painful. And I'd always been a big walker and I started getting these bumps on the top of my feet. And um, I went around the corner. There was a, a doctor of Chinese medicine around the corner because, of course, I didn't have health insurance. I'm self-employed <laughs> back then. Uh, so no, no health insurance. But I went to this um, doctor of Chinese medicine, and she, she did some tests and stuff. And she said, I think you need to go get a blood test because I, I think this is rheumatoid arthritis. And she treated me with, you know, for the pain and everything. But she said, you need to know what's going on. So I did get a test, and it did show that I had... Um, the markers. So I started my journey then with her. Um, thank goodness that was the person I went to, you know, because yeah, for sure. they're, they're much more likely to help you figure out why this is happening rather than just giving you a pill that could right. give you cancer because the pills they have for that are, are awful for rheumatoid arthritis. So anyway, the show was just about to wind down, nine-year run, and, and um, I had decided to come back to Canada to be closer to my family, because my mom had already been, um, they were having some trouble with her. They didn't really know what was wrong, but she was struggling. So I came back um, in 2010 to be with them, and um, it was like this big this snowball, like everything happened at once. And I, you know, I, I was stressed. I was um, in pain. My mom was sick and she was also diagnosed with cancer for the fourth time. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So there was just all this stuff going on and I found myself um, stressed to the max and, and I was losing my own memory. Like I would forget things. I would go downstairs and I'd forget why it was I went down and I would you know, and all this pain and, and fear, of course, worry about my mom, because we, at the time, we really didn't know what was, what was happening. Anyway, it was about two months after I got back that we, we figured out what was wrong with mom. Um, and I also started doing research and realized that what was happening to me with the rheumatoid arthritis was a precursor, or it could be a precursor to Alzheimer's dementia. Or, One of or the I things think. I didn't mention to connect the dots for anyone who doesn't know is Alzheimer's and Parkinson's are now considered to be autoimmune diseases. That's yeah. one of the causes of um, Parkinson's and one of the causes of Alzheimer's. So if you don't understand, that's why we're saying it could have become that, you need to know that missing link because that's relatively new information. Yeah, that's, that's actually, I, I, you segued perfectly into what I was, was going to offer was that people say that Alzheimer's is, is um, the, the reason so many of the treatments for Alzheimer's, these pills haven't worked is because they're just tackling the symptoms, the tangles and, the, and so forth. But those proteins, they are there for a reason. The amyloid plaques and the tau proteins are there. They are our body's defense mechanism. That's our immune system in our brain going haywire. So if all you're doing is, is trying to get rid of those proteins, all you're doing is making the body say, whoa, wait a minute, I gotta make more of these. So that's why sometimes when they give this to Alzheimer's patients, which is what happened with my mom, she got a little bit better for a while, but then it was just like, she just, shoom. it was incredibly fast. But that's because the immune system was kicking into overdrive and making more of these tangles and plaques because that's what the immune system is there to do. Right. So I, as I was studying, I was learning this and, and the rheumatoid arthritis, I realized that as an autoimmune disease, it could send me there so easily. And with all the stress and my worry and my forgetfulness. And so 
I started on this protocol to eliminate the rheumatoid arthritis because there was no way. And I'm a harpist. I can't have my fingers right. like this. And that had to be frustrating for you. It was terrifying. It was my livelihood, you know. That's <laughs> so um, I started examining. Okay, first the alcohol had to go. Um, and I have to admit, I still have a glass of wine now and again, because I, I love a, a glass of wine, but it has resveratrol. So <laughs> I right. justify it that way. Well, and if you're going to drink anything, wine is the best thing to drink. Right. Um, but that, and also I had to cut out anything with dairy because it's highly inflammatory mm -hmm. and, and, um, meat, meat is just, it just, there's so much acid that is created in your body when you ingest those things that it's just not worth it. And I could tell, boy, my elbows, I would feel them. They would just get so sore if I had, and I loved cheese. I got to tell you, pizza was one of my favorite foods. So all of a sudden, but if I would have pizza, it would just send me into a spin. Yes, so I'm highly I to, sensitive to dairy. And I kept hoping someday I was going to get dairy back. And guess what? It's never coming back. No, you know, because it's just inflammatory. It's just not worth it. It's, I, I belong to a, a group of um, people who, who have gone plant-based after age 50. And I was just on the, on the group on Facebook. And they, they, the one lady, she's just struggling so hard with this idea of not having cheese. And I said to her, you know, just stop it for 10 days. Just, just pretend like it doesn't exist and see how you feel. And, and, you know, I'm just waiting to see. And, and if, if I have to call her every day or, or message her every day, I'll do that because it's not that long. And if you can do that 10 days, you will feel a difference. But it's also highly addictive. I it's very addictive. All kinds of things are, I used to think I had a problem with willpower. I didn't have a problem with willpower. I was yeah. addicted to sugar. I was addicted to the stuff that's in milk and the casein and that, that's and the in cheese. the cheese. And I was addicted to all the chemicals that are in processed food. You oh, eliminate yeah. them and suddenly you're not hungry all the time and you have food oh. freedom. It's an that's amazing true. thing. Isn't it something? It's just incredible. But you know, uh, it's really interesting to me because I, I, I work with private clients coaching now to try to help more people look after themselves better. And it's amazing how many people have bought into this whole um, story that um, came about because of Ansel Keys and his kind of manipulation of data on fat and health and heart health. We have this image that if you eat fat, you're going to get fat. And so people have eliminated fat they tried but in in place of that the big food industries have put sugar and preservatives and artificial and believe flavors. it or not it was partly the sugar industry that did that oh yeah they yeah. paid all the universities to demonize fat fat and to make it not sugar at all you should, you can eat yeah, sugar and okay. or you could eat the chemicals that are the fake sugar which are just as god awful for oh, you more even even more that they're but not like all the fats are good the good fats are good the good fats exactly there's a whole list of bad oh fats. yeah yeah oh yeah I've, and and that's in my book actually i've got three good fats and bunches of bad fats. Right. But you know, this whole thing where people are, are saying, I can't eat fat, you know, I'll get fat. And it's the farthest thing from the truth. And you need it, your brain needs it. <laughs> your bones need it. You know that all these young women who were cutting out fat, now they're finding they have bone problems. They have osteoporosis at like 35 and 40 and 45 because their bones didn't have the nutrients that they needed. And it's the same with your brain. And it's yep. the same with your immune system. We need that. We were designed to have those things. Right. So it's just, it, it kind of makes me a little bit angry when I, when I, because well, yeah, people I actually just, do. One of the things I go speak about is all of the deceptions that we have been brought up with because of marketing. And that's a biggie. And milk makes your body strong. That's bull. <laughs> it actually is acidic and it takes all the calcium out of your bones because it's trying, your body wants to protect your kidneys from the acid. From the acid. So, you know, yeah. we've been told all kinds of cock and bull.
And you need to be responsible for your own health and you need to research and you need to know these things. Yeah. So you can, you, they could buy your books, they could buy my book, or they can research themselves, but they need to own it and find it out. I was blown away when I started to research. Oh yeah, me too. But now the good thing is those 10 years, those nine years I was on that television program, we talked about that all the time. I used to talk to guests who um, the, uh, Corey Brackett, Sweet Poison, talked to Dr. Sherry Tenpenny. So I had a good background. I was really lucky that my, my background had given me the, the research um, chops to find out what was really going on. You know, I wasn't blinded by right. marketing like so many people are. And, and you know, I'm not blaming the victim at all because we have been fed such a load and we have been uh, marketed to and brainwashed. It just doesn't freaking stop. And it is very frustrating because you could know you could help so many people, but they are, they are, you know, convinced by the marketing masters and the doctors who are the um, uh, enablers of the pharmaceutical industry. Right. I call <laughs> them the who said of the greatest magnitude which is a phrase I learned when I was in retail store management. Uh, who said of the greatest magnitude? It's somebody we believe no matter what he says. Yeah, And that's you good. know your body, but your doctor will tell you something that doesn't resonate with you, but you believe him because he's the who said of the greatest the magnitude. And it's, we need our doctors. I don't want to tell you that you don't no, no. need your doctor, but you do need to own your own body because he's not in your body. So he doesn't know what you feel. That's so right. go back home and research and go back to your doctor and have a robust conversation. He got absolutely no nutrition in medical school. None. I know. Isn't that crazy? And, and so, you'll say, yeah. yeah, if you go to a doctor a, 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 and I, and I, I was really lucky when I went back to Canada, yay, universal healthcare. So I went back to Canada and I met, and I, I introduced myself to this lady, a doctor in downtown Toronto. And, and I said to her, look, here's the deal. I don't do drugs. I don't do pharmaceuticals. So you're going to have to work with me. I, I, I know that I need someone to help me with diagnostics and I, I you know, and we're going to do these things, but I don't do drugs. So we're going to have to figure out what's, what's going to be the best way to do this. And, you know, I was so, I was upfront with her because I, I interviewed several doctors before I accept, uh, settled on this um, primary care physician. And she was so cool. You know, she said, I get you. I'm glad you're like that because too many people just come in and want a pill and they don't own it. She was young enough also that she, she, she had a little bit more of an open mind. Thank mm -hmm. goodness. Mm -hmm. So that helps a lot, but you're right. This white, I, I say my mom had the white coat syndrome because when it went to can when she got cancer that fourth time, um, when I had just got back home, it was vaginal cancer and the treatment for vaginal cancer is barbaric. It is barbaric. And I, my, my father and I both tried to talk mama out of it because it was just like, we knew it was going to send her over the edge mentally because of what it was and um but she said but the doctor the doctor the doctor what could yeah, we do I, did, I went through that with my mother my mother got a very rare disease called multiple system atrophy and doctors didn't know what it was let alone i actually went in and read the medical journals i could find so that i could hold decent conversations with them but i would tell him something that i had observed in mom and she, why did you tell him that you know, mm. because he's your doctor, he needs to know. Well, yeah. don't we're just going to do what he tells me to do. No, we're not. <laughs> yeah. Some of the things they wanted from her, I had learned some of the things were actually harming her. And at one point, her doctor looked at me and said, who's the doctor here? <laughs> I said, who's the daughter? I said, humor yeah. me. If I'm wrong, we'll find it out pretty quick. But humor me. And usually I was right. When she passed away, he called and thanked me that he had grown a lot because of being forced wow. to know what he was doing with her. So God love him. But yeah, ten, we went 10 years back and forth. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You know, I was, it, it was really difficult with mom because her doctor, and of course I was learning all this stuff as she's going through this. Right. And when I learned about, you know, we do not want to have any kind of food coloring. We do not want to have, sugar. Um, 
And my sister's also very, so I'm so grateful that she's so on board with me with this um, natural approach to things. So eventually it got so that mom, you know, she couldn't toilet herself or anything. So we had to put her in a nursing home, which was one of the hardest things ever yeah. to do. Um, but there, oh my God, the food, the food. I, I don't even know where to begin with my disgust with the food. It, it was like this terrible color, but they would give them jello, which number one uh, has the red food dye. And number yep. two, it was sugar-free because they had diabetics. So it had aspartame in it. I went off the rails. You're not giving my mother aspartame. She has brain problems. What are you doing giving her a and neurotoxin? aspartame, for anybody listening, is a neurotoxin. It's a neurotoxin. Why would they give that to people who are, I just, anyway, that whole thing. So we've got this whole system set up where they're just warehousing people, number one. But the people who are in charge, the doctors who are in charge of these places, don't know anything about nutrition. I spoke to the, the quote, and I put this in quotes, nutritionist at this facility. And she said, well, there's no problem with aspartame. It's been proven safe. I said, you should never have got your license. No, because she it, shouldn't have. Because it is not safe. And the yellow I, packet isn't any safer. The blue no. packet, the pink packet, and the yellow packet, they're almost worse than sugar and sugar is as addictive as cocaine and heroin you it don't is. want any of that stuff the nope. fructose the corn syrup the beet sugar you don't want that stuff in your body I it know. does harm <laughs> and, but you know and and the, and of course older people especially when they're sick like that they really like sweets <laughs> it's really hard to get them to eat their meal and they put the diet gum desserts out at the same time they put the meal out well of course they're not going to eat their meal it's like giving it to a three-year-old they're going to eat their dessert first if you give them a chance you know so i you know my between my sister and brother-in-law and i we had to go there all the time and just keep like eagle eyes on everything that they put they were serving ginger ale diet ginger ale why diet ginger ale like <laughs> And again, the neurotoxin. All, all soda is gut rot. Of course so it for is. anybody out there drinking soda still, find yeah. something else that's just more refreshing, like water with water. food in it. Um, I bought big glass bottles on Amazon. I keep infused water in my refrigerator. Yep. That's what I, make I drink. Sun tea. Yeah. I make sun tea here every morning because it's the sun comes right into our, our living room there. I put the tea right out front and I've got tea for the whole day. It's amazing. And, you know, all these fruit teas and everything, I don't need anything else. I, I couldn't even drink a soda now, I don't think. I wouldn't, I, of course, I yeah, never no, really I, was a big soda drinker. So, And I never liked the diet soda. So if I drank a soda, I drank the sugar soda. Okay. But that was before I knew how horrible sugar was in soda. And, and, and you know what? In, in the, most of the drinks in Canada and in, in Canada and the U.S., if you are drinking a, a sugar drink, you're drinking high fructose corn syrup. You're not even right. drinking sugar. Right. At least here in Ecuador, they don't use high fructose. They do use sugar rather than high fructose. Not that it's better, but it's just, it's very interesting that they, they right. have the, the, the formula in North America is using the high fructose because it's the side, it's a, it's a my well, People will talk about the fact that Coke from Mexico tastes better because it does. Yeah, it <laughs> because does. It's, yeah. it doesn't have the high fructose corn syrup. In yeah. It. But you know what? It's really interesting. Um, in America, I think it's 40, no. I forget the percentage. I don't have the numbers in my head right now, but it's like seventh or eighth in the world in the number of people who have dementia. You know where we are here in Ecuador? 144 percentage in, in terms of incidence. So what does that tell you? That tells you that these things have something to do with diet. Oh, because the statistics make it very clear. You, I, you I have to see statistics that statistics all the time. So, you know, like, okay, so these, we're all people <laughs> and we all have the same basic physiology. So there's no reason why in here, which is a very poor country, a very poor country and America and Canada, which are very rich, there's got to be something that's going on. What is it? It's processed food. Yep. It's sugar. I don't you know, know what the statistics and, are for Canada, but we're 37th in the world in health. 
Yeah. And we are the richest country. So tell me, what does that tell you right there? Yeah, it tells you that. that yeah, well, and think how much is spent on health. And I say the word health yeah. in quotes because it's not health care, it's sick care. But right. how much is spent in, in the United States? It's very, it's the highest in the world per capita, right? On sick care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's because, again, people are not taking control of their own health. They're depending on the big food marketers, which, which are intimately tied with the pharmaceutical industry, which is intimately connected with the people like Monsanto and all of those people who are- And they're the also intimately involved with our politicians. Exactly, so when you've I got started, that. I got angry, but guess yeah. what? We're responsible for ourselves. So my call to action at the end of the first book is we need to all join together and become what I call the armies of one. Each individual person together, if we get together, the Institute for Responsible Technology says it's only a 5% shift and food companies, agricultural companies, they'll yes. all start to change because yes. they don't want to lose their business. That's so right. if we join together and all of you listening out there, if you start to make changes and join us, then we're one step closer to starting to fix our food system. Exactly. We have to do it. I say that all the time to people. They complain and complain. I say, vote with your wallet. You have the power. If you don't like what's happening, don't buy it, number one. But you write to them. You call them. You go on social media. You say, I'm not buying your crap because of this. And right. it's, until you fix this, I'm not buying any of your crap. And my friends aren't going to buy any of your crap. But you have to tell them. They have yeah. to understand why their numbers are going to go down. You know, and it's you the need same. to tell your politicians that yes. aren't allowing you to know that it's GMOs inside that food, that that is not okay. We yeah. have to start to take our power back. Yeah, yeah. And that's, I think that's one of the reasons I, I like it here so much because people are a lot more independent here in, I'm in Ecuador, I'm on the coast, and um, government is broke here. They never have any money. And if they do have, it gets corrupted somewhere. <laughs> it goes, it goes. <laughs> But it doesn't matter because these people are incredibly resilient. Now, this, this lockdown, because we had a severe lockdown over this COVID nonsense, has been a real, um, a real strain for these people because they live day to day. They don't have savings accounts. They don't have freezers full of food. A lot of people don't have electricity. So um, it, it's been an issue, but the resiliency and the independence is very refreshing because they don't expect the government to come and help them. Not like the US and Canada. Heck, in Canada, they're getting paid every, every month for who knows how long to be not working um, because of this. But here in Ecuador, we don't have that kind of money. And it's almost a good thing because that means people have to get back out. They have to look after themselves. They know that there's nobody, but they also don't, they don't really like listen to the government very much because they, you know, they know that they have to do their own thing. And, you know, the fresh fruit and the fresh vegetables. I go to the Mercado, I can get a week's worth of vegetables for $12. So, you know, that's, that's a big thing. And I was, I'd like to go back to the difference between the, the, the worlds again, in terms of Alzheimer's and other autoimmune diseases. You don't hear about people getting MS and everything here so much very few you know it's just not like like it is in the north america and i do believe it's partly the food it's a big heart part of it is the food fresh well, air vitamin d mm -hmm. one of the things that i changed when i got sick was all the toxins in my life because they yeah. were everywhere and toxins are one of the things that creates leaky gut and leaky gut is what creates inflammation which creates autoimmune disease so you have to get down to what the root cause that's causing your illness and you can do it but yeah. there's a fair amount of people who don't want to give up that stuff and yeah. they i've had i've been told more times than i can tell you that toxins are boring Toxins are not boring. Toxins are an inconvenient truth. And we all need to accept it and we need to purge them now. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole topic in my book. I have a, like eight weeks and one of the weeks we detox the house. We go under the sink, we go in the closet, we go uh, in the bathroom and just like, okay, you don't, you don't need this stuff. You can clean just fine with vinegar and baking soda. 
right. amazing. It's right. incredible how well you can clean. And, and I actually give recipes in the book for how, you know, for natural cleaning products so that, you know, my, my under my sink, I have a big jar of a big gallon of vinegar. I have baking soda. I have some uh, essential oil that I use and for really bad stuff, I do have some um, scrubbings, like scrubbing powder. I also that's used um, hydrogen peroxide. Yes, because and I use that for white food. vinegar and hydrogen peroxide, it'll kill everything. That goes in my washing. I put mm -hmm. like a little bit of H2O2 in my wash instead of having all these soaps yeah. that smell and, and all everything. Those, and all those odors are highly toxic. Um, you know, oh, yeah. All that stuff. And it costs you a fortune. It so costs you a fortune, yeah, and it costs and it costs you a fortune in many ways, yeah, because mm -hmm. all of a sudden you you, how many little kids? This is another very interesting thing. The 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 um, I'm very worried about all these antibacterials and these cleansers because they are so toxic. And in uh, Sweden, which is one of the cleanest countries of the in the world, they actually have a higher incidence of Alzheimer's than the U.S. But um, it's, it's really interesting because some of the research shows that the cleaner a country, the cleaner a space, oh, actually, that makes sense. the more likely you are to have dementias and or autoimmune disease because our bodies don't get a chance to have those nice, healthy gut flora yeah. and fauna. We need bacteria. We're mostly- and if we don't have them, we can't live. We can't live. We need them. So all this antibacterial stuff really concerns me because I'm a, so afraid of what's going to be happening. And think of all the depression, all of the, the mood problems we're having, anxiety. Um, you know, they, they say it's from isolation. That might be part of it. But I also really believe that the gut microbiomes of people are getting destroyed. Well, and, and depression that, comes from the gut. From the gut. So and, if and, I wake up and my mood's down a little bit, the first thing I do is I look back at, what did I eat yesterday? yesterday? And if I didn't eat enough of all the colors of the rainbow, I adjust and my mood lifts almost immediately. What we eat is what we become. And that includes our mood as well as our cells. Yeah, so it's a big, it's a big issue. And, and right now, I think people really need to be aware of that. You know, you're, you think you're protecting yourself, but you're actually messing with your immune system. Right. I actually just this. wrote a blog that I'm not only concerned about our children going back to school, but I'm concerned of all the cleaning that's being done around oh. our children with all those horrific cleaning supplies. Oh, bleaches, bleach. And then I, then I make recommendations about what to do instead. You know, if you hand a child a cloth that's got chemicals in it, you tell them to clean your de their desk. They're doing all kinds of harm to their body. And so hot water and soap will clean better than that cloth. It cleans better than Clorox. It cleans better than Lysol. But I also did find one cleaning thing that I absolutely love called Branch Basics. You probably couldn't get it down where you are, but it's a one on the EWG scale of toxicity and they're plant enzymes. Ah, I use it enzymes. to clean everything. I use it to clean my toilets and my dishes and my laundry because it's an amazing product and it goes through my skin. It does me absolutely no harm. Perfect. And my body picks it up right away. And yeah. your bodies are too. You just don't know it yet. It takes yeah. 20 years for that toxic load to build up. Well, yeah, exactly. That's why I keep saying to people, they say, oh, my brain is fine. I'm like, I don't have any memory problems. I said, yeah, you're 40. So, so it takes 20 to 30 years for, for symptoms of dementia to show, usually less for autoimmune, but, but then it can lead into uh, mm -hmm. the dementias. But you're you're messing with yourself right now. You think that it's that it's okay, but it's not. You don't worry about it when it starts causing problems. You think about it now because well, prevention. Well, we expect that we should take some over-the-counter medication and that that's okay, which is also doing lots of harm to oh. the body. But the big statistic that I've really sunk my teeth into is that 53% of our children have a chronic illness. Yes, I know. So know. don't tell me that you don't need this information because if it's impacting our children that way, it's impacting you that way too. And we've got to clean it up for them because they don't mm. stand a chance. That's right.
That's right. And the, right now with all of this stuff, with this cleaning and this, the, the masks themselves, of course, they have all the back, the, the not good bacteria that's stuck there and everything. And I'm so worried with all of this, what's going to happen even a year from now, because it will cause problems. Yep. It yep. will cause chronic illnesses. But yeah, that's one good thing. Uh, I mean, here, it's, it's really interesting because it's not a clean country. You know, like people don't use bleach everywhere and, and stuff. And um, uh, Guayaquil, which is a big city coast, and that's where the airport is, where we land, um, they had a big problem. But it wasn't so much because people were sick, but because they closed things down. So people who were sick weren't looked after. And that's happened in a lot of places, right? I mean, the cancer mm -hmm. rates, people aren't getting treatment. They're not even getting They can't um, even get checked. into the hospital because of all the COVID. Right. So I think, I think we've got a, a whole bunch of issues that are going to come up that are completely independent of any virus. But, but um, here, because it's not so clean and, and it has such a low um, rate of dementia, like 144th in the world, that tells me that there's got to be a connection with that too. Right. You know, well, the I've traveled the world because of the jewelry business. Right. And I have to be careful when I go to other countries because they have microbes my body can't handle. Yes, yes. So when we started going wild with hand sanitizer, it just didn't make sense to me. I used to no. have huge arguments with friends. My yeah. body is used to the microbes that I'm getting on my hand and I don't want to kill them all. No, and they would get no. angry with me that I had to kill them all. Well, it ends up that stuff was doing us all kinds of harm. And so just logically it didn't make sense to me yeah yeah i really yeah it'll be it'll be interesting to see how long term this this will affect all of us because you know the the thing is the it's not just in isolation so you and i may be looking after ourselves but the fact that everybody else is is in this chronic condition it does and i'm a lot about energy mm -hmm. so that chronic fear and, and, and chronic illness, it seems to be like weighing everybody down. It's, it's like, just, we have to give people some power and hope and, and feeling like they can change this because it brings us all down. Everybody gets so, I really noticed that when I, about a month ago, um, I was with this group, uh, cause I, I go out and feed people because they don't have money. So I've been raising money and we go out and, and feed in the barrios, but, um, out there, the difference between the people who are just grateful and, and looking forward and the people who are scared, and they were all the expats, all the immigrants, all the scared people. And I didn't want to be around the expats because they were all scared. My energy would feel like it was getting just depleted. Sure was. And, and, my, and I can feel it in my gut. I, and I guess I always could. Whenever anything went wrong, it was my gut would react right away. Those oh. butterflies are real, by the way, for for your viewers. Those butterflies are real. There right. are gut microbes dealing with stress and all oh, yeah. of those things. So when you're feeling those, that's your tummy is is your friend. It's well, telling when you. When you say that it doesn't feel right in your gut, that's because it really doesn't feel right in your gut. That's you know, there's right. phrases that we use that we don't connect the dots to, but they're all real. That's right. I used to say my butterflies were wearing army boots because they would get so. <laughs> but anyway, I, th I think that we, we, by taking control, by taking our, our, our power back and not letting big pharma or the doctors or all of that tell us what's good for us and by not falling for, for all this hyper back debacterializing is that a word right. <laughs> i think i think we're uh we, we've just got to do it we just have to do it because there's going to be so many problems with autoimmune and it's just going to affect all of us because that energy it just pulls you down you feel it mm -hmm. right and having a healthy gut is where it all begins everything everything, everything. all chronic illness begins in the gut whether it's cancer heart disease, autoimmune yeah. disease, diabetes, which is now considered one of the autoimmune diseases. Yes. It all starts in the gut. So take really good care of your gut. And if you ever need a reason why it's important to eat organic, mm 
Oh. That's it. Because all the, you, your body thing. doesn't need all those poisons with your food because no. it's destroying your gut. And when you destroy your gut, you destroy your body. That, uh, one of the things that I, I try to explain is that glyphosate is actually a pesticide, right? It's yeah. an anti, an, an, so in an, an antibiotic. So when you're ingesting the crops that have been sprayed with that, you are ingesting an antibiotic basically, and it's killing your gut, gut microbiome. It's just, just destroying it. And I think that might be a lot of the problem with, even if people are trying to eat healthy, if you're not eating organic, then you're still getting that stuff. But you know, of course, I'm sure you've read and you've, or you've done the research that um, even organic stuff now, because the glyphosate and all of this stuff is in the water and in the air, we can't even get if away you're from eating, it. we can't get away from it. So you have to do the best you can to try and steer right. clear. And you it. don't make yourself twisty because that doesn't do you any good either. No. But it's not only the glyphosate, which is still being sprayed on our crops, but they just lost the big, huge lawsuits that told us they know that it causes cancer, even though it's still being sprayed on our crops. Bayer just did a multi-billion dollar settlement with yep. other people who've gotten ill from glyphosate, but it's still being sprayed on our crops and on our grass and even on our schoolyards. So you need to start asking questions. If you have a child, what are they using on their schoolyards? What yeah. is your city using on the little strips along the sidewalk that your yep. dog is walking on? And then past that, GMOs, half of GMOs oh. are made so that they're glyphosate, glyphosate ready. Glyphosate resistant, yep. And the yep. other half have Bt toxin from, from right in the plant, which yeah. is the gift that keeps on giving. It gets in your gut and it replicates and it's blocking all of the minerals that come into your gut from getting into your body. Plus, its whole purpose is that a bug eats it and it blows up the little bug. It's blowing up our bees and our butterflies. If we don't have bees and butterflies, we don't have pollinators. And it is cleating out of the ground as well as yes. out of our body. So, yeah. and it's causing, you notice how many more allergies there are out there? Oh, it's everybody has allergies. Them. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah, when I was a kid, I knew one person who had asthma, one person, my uncle. Now, it seems like 30% of the kids have asthma. That's, yep. that's pretty scary. So we, we just have to take control. We just have to do, and like you said, I love that idea of asking questions where your kids, I never had kids, so I never- uh, Yeah, no, I didn't it. either, but I, just, I, I did a whole section on raising healthy children in my second book. Yeah. At first I said, what do I know? I'm not, I'm not a mother. And then yeah. friends said to me, because you researched more than anybody else, so who cares if you had children? You're passionate about it, add it yeah. in. Yeah. So I have a whole section on children, and then I added a whole section on pets because yeah, I lost pets. all three of my cats when I first discovered I had autoimmune disease and I hadn't connected the dots that not only had my world become more toxic, but their world had become more yeah. toxic too. And I didn't want anybody going through what I did when I could have avoided it had I known more. Yeah. So that's why I just now, it's been three years since my beeper passed and I just got two new kitties now because now I know how to bring them up so that they yeah. have a better chance to live a long and happy life. Yeah. But it all yeah. started with GMOs in the late 1990s. I kept thinking, yeah. what has changed that has, because my cats always made it into their 20s. The big joke of all mm. my friends was they wanted to come back in their next life as my cat. <laughs> my cats. <laughs> well, yeah, my, so GMO, yeah. people don't, don't get that that's in our animal food too. It's Why are everywhere. all these animals with cancer and everything? You know, you never heard of dogs having cancer. It seems like everybody, every time I turn around, a friend's animal has cancer. Well, and now, an average age for a dog now is only 10. And yeah. for a cat is 12. My cats always made it into their 20s. That is just not okay. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We, uh, we have a 20 year old cat right now, Curtis. He, he, he came with me from Las Vegas to uh, LA to Toronto to here. <laughs> he's, he's quite the traveler, my old Curtis. <laughs> it's wonderful. Yeah, but he's also been looked after pretty well. He, he you know, we, we were careful, but um, uh, I, I was thinking when you mentioned about GMOs, that's something else is not allowed here. 
ge genetically modified foods can uh, crap. Congratulations can for them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a lot of us are very um, adamant about keeping it that way. There's like a whole very vocal group. Well, believe it or not, some of the latest world treaties that we've done have demanded that countries accept our crops that are genetically modified. It was written into our contract with the United Kingdom. That really ticked me off because they eat a lot of our processed food anyway, so they are not as clean as like France's, who eats mostly whole real food. But mm. how dare we do that? It's not good for anyone. <laughs> it's it's just the, the lobbies, those those big lobbies, man. They've got it all. They've got everybody wrapped up. I'm I'm really grateful that that they don't allow GM. Now you could they can import like if a food comes in like a, there was a soy sauce that came in from um, the U.S. and it, it, it's of course genetic. Most of the soy there is genetically right. modified. So, but they have to put big stickers, genetically modified. So. And when we did go to Europe. People, because I had my book, I had gone to do a couple interviews, people told me to be very careful of anything that came from Spain, that oh. they were pretty clean, but that anything from Spain was going to be genetically modified. So there is a beginning wow. awareness that yeah. they don't want to go there, but it hasn't been completely banned yet. Yeah, I remember this is years and years ago when it first started coming out and, and I just started my TV show and we had somebody on uh, talking about GM, Jeffrey Smith. And he's very, very Yeah, he's the guy, he's the, the Institute of um, Responsible, Responsible Technology. Technology. I love him. So, so he was on our show very early in on his whole trek there. And um, I remember him talking about an experiment with rats. Do you remember this? Where the rats, there were two groups of rats. Well, there was, uh, there was one group of rats and they had access to GM corn and non-GM. They all chose the non-GM corn. Right. corn. Then when those, those rats weren't given the choice and they had nothing to eat but the GM corn, they all got very aggressive and they got unhealthy. And to me, like that was early on in this whole thing. Why didn't somebody say, whoa, wait a minute, if the rats are having this much trouble, because why are they doing Because that's called causation, which they do not consider to be proof. It's an absence of, of study. It's not a, you know, and, and it all gets blocked at the university level to be studied. So it's all a con, but yep. it's hard to get it's hard to get the statistics to, he's been fighting this for years. I know. God love him. Yeah. Um, I just listened to a podcast that he did where they did a generational thing on glyphosate. And although it may not, if I ate glyphosate, it may not impact my children. It would start to impact their children. And by the next generation down, my great grandchildren, it was horrific. And so we aren't even far enough into this to know all the problems. No, no, not even close. No, I think that's the true of a lot of things. We're going we're gonna to find out <laughs> in yeah. the future. I just hope that uh, people listening, uh, you know, I, watching, please, please do your best to cut this stuff out because, um, you know, autoimmune is one part of it. Allergies is another. To see my mama die like she did, I got to tell you, and I believe that a lot of her problem was firstly toxins. She worked in a factory that had chemicals. It was a, they made the foam for car seats. So she was exposed to those chemicals. And um, she was the housewife of the fifties, convinced that convenience foods were the salvation. You know, she got conned into that. So she ate, you know, canned things. She bought TV dinners. When TV dinners right. came out, you know, um, I do believe that that's why mama got so sick so fast and had and can one cancer. Thing, when I work with a client, they don't realize how many, how many chemicals are in, in frozen dinners. Yeah, They're, That's all they, they are. It's, it's all chemicals. Yeah. So I believe that that's why mama got so sick and uh, so many times because when she died with, she had Alzheimer's when she died, but the can it was the cancer for the fifth time that actually was the cause of death. So and these I mean, chemicals are directly related to the cancer. And Absolutely. sugar feeds the cancer. Yeah. So, now, fortunately, she wasn't much of a sugar eater, but, but yes, sugar is, oh, yeah. Yeah, sh cancer. And you know what it drives me crazy? I have a very good friend who passed away a couple of years ago. She had ovarian cancer. 
And when she was going through chemo, she, you know, the doctor said, you just eat whatever you want, whatever you'll eat, whatever you can keep in your stomach. And she was a sugarholic. She was eating sugar while she's on chemo. So like, she no. might as well have just like, I don't know. She ended up passing away from the cancer because the chemo just, right. just killed her. <laughs> you have to look at your body like a building. If you're going to rebuild your building, you want quality building supplies. And yeah. if you're not eating any quality building supplies, then your body has nothing to build from. And believe it or not, every cell in your body has a shelf life. And <laughs> yes. so it does. They all, you know, and they're different for every part of the body. It's like, um, your gut is only six days, your gut wall, but yep. there, you know, your blood is three months, right. which is why right. your A1C, if you're diabetic, takes a average of three months of blood cells, but everything in your body has a shelf life. So what do you want your body rebuilding from? Yeah, I now, exactly. I now get it. I want real nutrients to, to yeah. rebuild my body. Well, and the body wants to heal if you give it real nutrients. And it will. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing how fast. I can't believe how fast my, my, my swelling and the bumps on my feet went away when I completely cleaned up my diet. Well, that's good to know because I have someone who just contacted me with arthritis. She wanted to know if her knobs would ever go away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you can see my elbows. No knobs. Yep. yep. Yeah. Fantastic. And the things on the top of my feet are gone. Yeah. Because that was really, really bad because I couldn't, I couldn't wear regular shoes. I couldn't wear like running shoes because the, the knobs were so bad. Right. So, yeah. Okay. It's so possible. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to round this up. How can yes. everybody find you? And when is your book coming out? Ah, it's, it's available now on pre-order on Amazon. Don't let the memories fade. Um, so you can pre-order it. it um, the official release date is September 12th, which would have been Mama's 82nd birthday. Lovely. And you can just, you, the best place to find me is just katekunkel.com. I have a blog there with all kinds of stuff. I'm like you, I'm, I'm just writing. Every time something comes up, I'm out there writing. And I'm going to put all it. her links in the show notes so that when you go to hear the podcast, you can find everything to how to find her. But I wanted Great. them to hear it from you too. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. And so oh, much fun oh, to talk to. Thing. Yes, go, oh, ahead. It was go ahead. I was just going to say, people who, who um, and this works for autoimmune, it works for dementia. I have a little a freebie. It's five things you can get, five things you can do right now. They're easy steps. Everybody can do them. And it's a free PDF. Just just go to the, the link that, that um, Cheryl has and you can just get it. And I know it seems like a lot, and I know when we're talking like this, it can seem overwhelming. Right. But but it's it's like my, my my mama used to say, it's like eating an elephant, one bite at a time. So we just do one little thing at a time, and anything you do is better than nothing. Right. Right. And it and it's worth it. Trust yes. me. When you when you lose your health and you start to feel great again, you never want to go back there again. No. no. Never. Never. So, That's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People, people can say, you know, well, well, you can just have just this. No, I can't. I don't ever want to feel like that again. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. My second book is all about how I get around ever eating the American standard diet again, Yeah. because I do not want it. And people go, aren't you deprived? Heck no. Oh. I was deprived when I was eating all that crud. I feel great now. And the last thing I am is deprived. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, not deprived at all. We're, we're in having the good life with the good food. <laughs> yeah, we are. Okay, well, thank you. This has been so much fun. Yes. I really appreciate it. And, and me too. <laughs> I hope we'll stay in touch. And I, I want to know all about how your book does. And if I can help you in any way with it, you know, I'd be happy to. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you all for another episode of Tell Me Your Story. It'll be about five weeks before this is actually live on my site. So thank you, and we'll chat again soon. Ciao.